Xenoblade Chronicles 3 has a variety of different side quests. Whether you're following the cinematic universe of Dorin and Bam Bam, or assisting heroes in liberating their colonies, each quest has its own adventures and nets its own rewards, with the king of them all allowing us to upgrade our blades, increasing their effectiveness and changing their design. This video will explain how to obtain these power-ups, including the prerequisites you must complete, along with the steps on how to upgrade them. Big spoiler warning though, as the quests require to unlock these upgrades is only available during the final chapter, so there will be area, hero and story spoilers within this video, so you have been warned. With all that out of the way, let's get to enhancing our blades. So to unlock these power-ups, we first need to complete the quest Uniting the Seven Nopon. This quest is given to you via Mr. Salmon during Chapter 7, after you've completed the boat upgrade quest, The Ultimate Vessel, and recruited Grey as a hero. After completing these, talk to Salmon one more time, and he will explain how he can empower the party's blades through the use of Origin Metal. This is the purpose of all of those glowing items in Ionios, which are named prior to this point as Odd Shards. On top on top of that, however, Salmon reveals that to grant these upgrades, we first need to find Seven Nopon, including himself, which wield the ULTIMATE HAMMER, which is a nice throwback to Noah's Lucky Seven, which was supposed to have been forged and worked on the exact same way. After completing the dialogue, our first mission becomes the tracking down and locating of the remaining six Nopon, who are scattered all over Ionios. Fortunately, half of the Nopon are extremely easy to find, like Berber, who you simply need to speak to. He's located next to the Nopon coin trader in Danaher Desert. If you're unsure of how to get here, skip travel to Raptor Perch and head into the cave directly to your left. Complete the trick puzzle and reach the cave's exit, and you will have your first hammer. Pain Pain and Gingin are also rather easy, but you must first complete their quests before being able to recruit them. That said, you simply follow Gingin around Lomak the Wildwood to complete his, and feed Pain Pain who is travelling to the Pharonis Hulk in Millic Meadows. Speaking to the both of them once more, then nets you their help as they head to the city. Next up after those is the legendary Tempapa. You first meet this Nopon via a Riku and Manana's ascension quest, tracking him down to get the famous chef Pon to sample Manana's cooking. After tasting, Tempapa sends you out to go fetch him some items, which you will use to improve Manana's cooking ability. I don't mean literally, just in terms of the narrative. All of the items you require can be found within the Cadencia region, but all are rather rare, so be patient and eventually you'll have them all. That said, depending on when you're watching this video, you can always check the wiki, as it may now be updated, telling you where to obtain obtain these items. After returning with all the collectibles, the quest will end and you can then recruit Tempapa, who is a bit annoyed via the whole ordeal. Oh, and did I mention he's not actually a chef? So that was a fucking lie. The next Nopon you must then recruit is Fixie Fixie, who is by far the most annoying out of the bunch. He's located within the Agnian prison, which when you return to, will now see that it is locked off from you. To regain access, you need to complete a lengthy set of quests, which includes unlocking the machine assassin Segari. To obtain her hero quest, you must first trigger a quest of hers, which is located just outside Colony 4, after raising the affinity of the area, then complete a side quest known as Writer's Block, which is located in the city, until finally heading to Capricorn Peak and turning left just after Colony Omega, which will then initiate her quest. After completing that, you will gain a new discussion topic, which talks about Colony Zero and where Segari and her friends will live, and they settle on the most homely place of them all. A prison. Completing this quest will then liberate the prison from the warden who has gone insane, and then you can finally speak to Fixie Fixie, who will then refuse to speak with you. Swap Voldy into the party and try again, and Fixie Fixie will have a change of heart, as it turns out that he is Valdi's master pun. Remember that plot point that was mentioned way back when? No? Me neither, I forgot about it as well. Fixie Fixie will then head to the city, and the final Nopon will be locked behind the discussion that you have just obtained. Initiate that, and Riku will reveal himself to be the final Nopon who can wield the hammer, as if he wasn't mysterious enough already. Head back to Colony 9, pick up the hammer that he just left lent up against the corner of the wall, head back to the city, and speak to Mr. Salmon, and uniting the seven Nopon will then be completed. And with that done, we are halfway there. 
All that's left to do now is collect enough origin shards to upgrade everyone's weapons and we'll be golden as it shouldn't take very long to we need how many? <clears throat> Origin shards come in seven different shapes and the amount you require differs depending on whose blade you're upgrading. In total though, you require a whopping 126 shards and that's going to take a little while. Now I won't be showing all of the locations in this video as understandably I'd rather not talk your ears off showing you where they are for the next three hours, but there are a couple of ways to make your lives a little easier. Firstly, I will link a website in the description which features some of the locations in each region, so you can easily grab those ones. By far the most effective method though is by defeating unique monsters. All UMs appear to be holding a shard which you get the first time you beat them, so releasing your rage from the previous quest you just completed on all of the wildlife is definitely a strategy. A quick tip whilst you're performing your culling though is to equip the soul hacker class, as killing UMs is required to power up this class, so you can kill two birds with one stone. Just don't remember to do this only halfway through though like me. Yo. Not every unique monster is needed, as you should have enough if you have been subconsciously collecting all the shards you've seen as you ventured through Ionios. So if you're not ready to take on the super bosses, don't worry. After collecting enough of them, return to Salmon and choose which character's blades you want to upgrade. This gives each weapon a new design and upgrades their combat abilities by slightly raising their attack, critical rate and block rate. Sadly however, these upgrades only affect the original owner of the blade, as if you equip their classes onto the other part members neither stats nor cosmetics come over, which is a bit of a shame, as I at least thought they would have used the attachments menu in clothing considering that there isn't much there at the moment. That said, all of the designs look really good and they even appear in cutscenes from this point onwards, even if you start up New Game Plus. My favourites personally are Noah and Lanza's, but I like Mio and Uni's also. Senna and Tyons are okay, but I kinda wish the Mondo also got a slight visual update as well. But that's how you unlock and upgrade each of the party's blades and weapons. If you've found this video useful and want to see more guides on Xenoblade Chronicles 3, consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell, as it helps me out a ton with making more videos like this one, and you can stay up to date whenever a new one is uploaded. That said, I hope you've enjoyed, and I hope to catch you in the next one. This is JB, signing off.